Previously, we talked about the difficulties in determining our magnesium status. And you can use things like magnesium loading, that's the gold standard, and measure our urine for magnesium output. We also talked about the prevalence of magnesium deficiency and how that leads to systemic inflammation and a list of chronic diseases. Today, I wanna to show you these original lab research papers and this chemical structure a phytic acid. What it is, what it does, and what you can do about it. So this is the structure of phytic acid. So you can see it's a crazy structure, a complicated structure, a lot of phosphorus groups, and this molecule is made by plants to store phosphorus. It's an important molecule. Interestingly, it also can grab onto, it can bind metals, things like iron, zinc, magnesium. Here, 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 here. It's called a chelator, it chelates, it binds metals. So in other words, when you're eating it, your body can't digest this particular molecule, phytic acid. You don't have the enzyme phytase. Bacteria do, certain animals do, but you don't. So if it binds magnesium in your intestine, you just pass that out. You don't get to use that. In other words, it contributes to your magnesium deficiency. And today I'm gonna to go through the papers, scientific papers, in reverse order. We're going to start in 2016 with this paper and then go backward. This one is from the Journal of Food Science and it's called Phytic Acid from Anti-Nutritional to Multiple Protection Factor of Organic Systems. And they say, yeah, phytic acid, up to 90% of total phosphorus in plants is stored in phytic acid, seeds, and they say studies have demonstrated its beneficial effects. This is what they're focusing on here. In the prevention and treatment of cancer. This paper is about the prevention and treatment of cancer using phytic acid. Why would that be even a consideration? Well, think about it. Phytic acid pulls zinc. It removes magnesium from your cells, from your intestine, from your dishes that you're doing your experiments on, whatever. Obviously, that's going to stress out the cancer cells and stop the cells from growing. It's going to destroy some enzymes. It's going to cause problems. So, it's not, but the problem is, it causes problems throughout your body as well. So, it's not a good treatment approach for cancer because it's so nonspecific. But, here's another book called Food Phytates, it's $275, so I just have the cover printed out. And this book also took a positive spin on phytic acid. They promoted it as a positive thing. And they say in the book that the highest levels of phytic acid are found in basically any flour and Brazil nuts. And then you have high levels also in almonds and tofu. And you have somewhat high levels in soy, anything with soy, oatmeal, corn and peanuts and then finally you have significant levels in any other wheat products brown rice and walnuts although those are levels that are lower so that's useful information but what's interesting to me is that they took this positive spin on phytic acid why are they promoting phytic acid well the author his name is Rukma Reddy the first author and he works for this place the Institute of Food Safety and Health what are they what's their mission facilitate innovation in the food industry through the assessment and validation of new and novel food safety and preservation technologies, processing and packaging systems, etc. risk management strategies, all this. So in other words, this guy's working for the food industry. Red flag, let's look at a paper from 2015, phytic acid. It's also in the Journal of Food Science Technology and it's called Reduction of Phytic Acid an enhancement of bioavailable micronutrients in food grains. Reduction of phytic acid, that's the goal of this paper. How do we get rid of it? How do we reduce it in food grains? Because people are gonna eat the grains. They start off by saying more than half of the world's population are affected by micronutrient malnutrition. More than half. Talking specifically about iron and zinc and then magnesium. And then they say things like 
You know, it's a major source. Phytic acid is a major storage form for phosphorus in cereals, legumes, oil, seeds. It's an inhibitor which chelates micronutrients. Yes, we know. And humans lack the enzyme phytase to digest this stuff. So anyways, the point of the paper is to use genetic improvement and essentially genetically modify wheat products to have less phytic acid. They say reducing phytic acid content through low phytic acid mutants. Yeah, so that's one strategy. But they want to reduce it. It's bad. It's contributing to our deficiency in magnesium. So let's go back to 2004 and this ironic research paper in Magnesium Research Journal. It's called New Data on the Bioavailability of Bread Magnesium. What do they say? They start off also by saying more than 50%, more than half of the world's total food energy is supplied by grains. So we saw more than 50% of the world's the world is malnourished in micronutrients. Now we see more than 50% of the world's total food energy is coming from grains, which of course have high phytic acid loads. And they talk about the problems with the zinc, magnesium, all these minerals. But why I brought this paper up is for two reasons. Because they talk about the difference between wheat strains, wheat varieties have different amounts of phytic acid. And then I also brought it up because they talk specifically about bread making using sourdough which increases magnesium bioavailability. In other words, you, the sourdough, the fermentation, can cut up that phytic acid, can destroy the phytic acid. Fermenting, pickling, anything, aging, these things can destroy the phytic acid, allowing your body to access the magnesium that you need in these other micronutrients. And this, by the way, is from wild apples that I picked in Maine, on a recent hunting trip, and I juiced them using my industrial juicer, and now I'm fermenting them. So I'm diminishing the phytic acid content in my own way, and you should too. You wanna to make sure you're not deficient in magnesium, and you wanna be aware of phytic acid.